What's up guys, this is Max Square, and in this video, I am doing a collaboration with Oliver J. Hughes. He's got an awesome channel focused on audio production, which I would definitely recommend checking out after this video. But he's gonna be showing you three tips to improve the quality of your voiceovers. This is not specific to any piece of software, he's just using Premiere, but it's entirely stock effects, so you can pretty much do this with anything. I have included a project file down below, which you can download, which basically just has a sample piece of audio with the same effects that Oliver uses so if you want to follow along and kind of see how it all works you can click that and download it it's completely free you can just mess around with it now this video is focused on post-production but we will be making a part two showing you what gear to use and how to set up for a recording so if you want to watch that be sure to subscribe to both of our channels and stay tuned without further ado I'm gonna hand it over to Oliver Yo, Luke, thank you so much for having me on your channel. I'm excited to be here and talk about voiceover. So let's jump right into it. So the biggest thing we're focusing on today is mixing a voiceover for yourself in your editor. We're not talking about taking it out and putting it into Logic or Pro Tools or Audition. In this case, we're just going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro, a very common NLE out there today for freelancers who are mixing voiceovers. However, the same concepts here apply in Final Cut or DaVinci or anything else you're going to be using that will have some stock audio plugins for you to use in your actual timeline. So three tools today we're going to talk about using to make a voiceover sound good by itself and sound good in your mix. So let's jump into Premiere here. And what is important is you're going to need to open your audio track mixer. We're not talking about the essential sounds panel at this point. That works on a clip by clip basis. It's a nice tool. We're talking about working on a track by track basis. If you look down here, you'll notice I have two audio tracks. One is soloed, one is not. That means we can only hear this green one. This green track right here is our voiceover, where this blue track that's connected to the video is the audio from the actual video. Quick little sample of that. We're not going to listen to much of that today. We're going to be focused on this voiceover. Feel that building beat soft metal and the fire of the forge. So that was recorded in a semi-controlled environment with a decent microphone. We'll get into the pre-production and actual recording of voiceovers in part two of this. But today we're just talking about the post-production. You've already recorded it. You've got it in the editor. What kinds of audio plugins would you put on it to make it sound good in the mix? So we noticed down here, Audio 2 is where the voiceover is. We're going to rename Audio 2 VO for voiceover. And we're going to rename Audio 1 Mix. So navigate up to your track mixer right here. You could probably have to go into window, open up the track mixer. It's going to ask you, you know, which timeline you want to look at. When the track mixer is actually open, you're going to hit this disclosure triangle and you'll have the actual uh, channel strips up here where you can grab the very top slot, go to amplitude and compression. You're going to use a compressor, grab single band compressor. Tool number one, compression. This is huge because compression decreases the dynamic range. What that means is in the human voice, when we talk, we go up and we go low. We go high, we go low, as far as the actual loudness. A compressor is gonna squeeze that dynamic range down, making the human voice much more even as we're talking from a volume standpoint. This is important for voiceover because you want the voiceover at the front of the mix or the top of the mix. You wanna always hear it and you don't want it ever to get drowned out in the music. So compression is important. For this compressor, we're gonna open it up. Threshold is when does it turn on? And the only other thing you wanna look at here is ratio. How much does it turn on in a sense? We're gonna keep it very simple. So let's just listen through here. Forge, that building rhythm against the anvil and against the world where time stands still and all that exists is the bend of steel. Well, if you look at your peaks here on the track mixer or over here on this meter, you can see that we're peaking at about negative 18, uh, falling down to like negative 30. So somewhere in between there, we want to set our threshold, which is going to tell it when to turn the compressor on. Let's go negative 23. See how this sounds with a ratio of four to one. The ratio is a little bit complicated. We're not getting into that here. It just the higher the ratio, the more it gets compressed. The threshold is when it turns on, the ratio is how much it gets compressed, basically. So four to one is very standard. I would go with that. With just an apple, a horse, and me, Tom Ralston, I'm taking you on a journey around the world and outside and into the life of cowboys and cowgirls. 
the jockey, the vet, the trainer, the blacksmith, the sportsman, hunter, and of course. So what I just did there, I took the threshold all the way down to negative 28. I increased the ratio to six to one. And then I took this other parameter you should be aware of called output gain, which basically just brings the levels back up at the end of the compressor. I took that up to about six decibels here to make up for what we compressed down at the beginning. So in a sense, the compressor decreases the dynamic range, which gives the illusion that the volume is going down because it technically is. But then the output gain brings that small, tight, good compressed sound all the way back up. So instead of having a high fluctuation in your volume, it brings it all down to a nice tight package and then puts that whole thing back up at the top. So threshold, ratio, and output gain. That's what we want to do with our compressor. Once we have that set and we like how it sounds. Just an apple, a horse, and me, Tom Ralston. I'm taking you on a journey around the world and outside and into the life of cowboys and cowgirls. The jockey, the vet, the trainer, the blacksmith, the sportsman, hunter, and of course. So I just did a few before and afters there. You can hear the fullness of the voice. The, 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 the meaty part of the human voice becomes more present when you use a compressor. Let's move on to EQ. Everyone knows what EQ is because EQs are used on stereos. They're used in your car. They're used anywhere you're listening to music. The EQ, we all know what it is. Grab a parametric equalizer in this case. Open it up, and what this is going to do is allow you to really make some slice and dice decisions in your mix where there's muddy spots you want to bring down or if there's low spots you want to boost up. So you just hit play here, and you can see the analyzer where exact frequencies are happening. Man's best friend dog together we'll feel the world simple but always true through the hands of the saddle maker so right away i can tell we've got some mids down here we need to bring down just a tick we also have a low end we want to just kind of roll off and i want to boost a little on the high let's see what that sounds like so come with me on an adventure around the world and into the wildly varied cultures of the horse and those humans who live their lives in the saddle fire of the forge, that building rhythm against the anvil and against the world where time stands still and all that exists is the bend of steel. With just an apple, a horse, and me, Tom Ralston, I'm taking you on a journey around the world and outside and into the life of cowboys and cowgirls. The jockey, the vet, the trainer, the blacksmith, the sportsman, hunter, and of course, man's best friend. So with those before and afters, you can tell I took out some of the boominess of the low mids, gave them some more presence on top, which is high frequencies, and rolled off the extreme low end that we didn't want anyway. Now the third and final tool we're gonna use is called a limiter. A limiter is just like a compressor, but essentially it just is used to raise your overall volume without clipping. It basically puts a hardcore compressor at the top wherever you designate so that no sound is going to go above a certain point. It helps you to boost the overall loudness without letting the peaks clip the mix. Does that make sense? All right. Give a thumbs up. Give a like to Luke's video if it makes sense. So back up here in the track mixer, we're going to go to amplitude again, find the hard limiter, click on that. And the, th the parameters you want to be aware of here are maximum amplitude and input boost. Don't worry about this stuff down here. Maximum amplitude. At what point do you want it to absolutely shut down the audio? Well, for our purpose, we're going to say negative one. Input boost. Well, let's look at input boost. Where are we peaking right now? And that'll help us decide where to actually set this. The steel. With just an apple, a horse, and me, Tom Ralston, I'm taking you on a journey around the world and outside and into the life of cowboys and cowgirls. The jockey, the vet, the trainer, the blacksmith, the sportsman, hunter, and of course, man's best friend. So about 12 decibels, and it's going to sound pretty good. Let's listen to it with our mix on top of it. Man's best friend, dog. Together we'll feel the world simple, but always true through the hands of the saddle maker. So come with me on an adventure around the world and into the wildly varied cultures. Of Let's listen to that one more time with all our effects turned off. Turn off the compressor. Turn off the EQ. Turn off the limiter. Man's best friend. Well, that's absurd because you can't even hear it. So let's turn the limiter back on, but we're not going to touch the uh, compressor or the EQ. Man's best friend, dog. Together we'll feel the world simple, but always true 
through the hands of the saddle maker. So come with me on an adventure around the world. Now that's fine. It's acceptable, but you can feel his spikes in his uh, actual dialogue amplitude as well as that booming low end. So let's re-engage the single band compressor, re-engage the EQ, and listen through one final time here. Friend, dog. Together we'll feel the world simple, but always true through the hands of the saddle maker. So come with me on an adventure around the world and into the wildly varied culture. That's it. That is as simple as it gets for making a voiceover sound good by itself and in your mix. Three tools, compression, EQ, and limiting. Use those three tools for your voiceovers and your production value will go up. Thanks again, Luke, for having me on. It was a pleasure and a blast. I'll see you in part two. So guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If so, be sure to like this video, but also head over to Oliver's channel. He's got some awesome content over there. Links down in the description. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.